All right, I'm going to go make myself some lunch. And today I've essentially just spent the entire morning now uh, refactoring code for the app that I'm working on. And so I started thinking about like, why, why do I even think coding is fun to begin with? And I wanted to talk just a little bit about this because I think there's a misconception out there about what programming is. And that misconception I think can be very deceiving because Programming isn't really what it looks like. It looks super boring and when you show it in just plain, like with no music and just show it as it is, it actually looks very boring and it seems like how could any person think this is fun? But I really do enjoy it and I'm also not the type of person that would, like that enjoys spending time in front of computers in general. So the creative aspect is to me one of the main things that makes programming fun. And it's also one thing that I think is understated in general, I think needs to be emphasized a lot more because I don't think, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't even know the creative aspects of programming. They think it's just like a mathematical scientist sort of thing where you just sit in front of a computer and you do maths essentially, which is not what programming is at all. The second part that I really like about it is actually the empowering like feeling that you get when you learn to code and you start to realize what you can actually do with it. I remember like having the realization that I could work pretty much anywhere with this. Like I was walking down the street here in Gothenburg and just like looking at different places that were open and I just realized like I could pretty much work anywhere here because I saw like the movie theater and I realized like okay they have an app, they have a system that they do the ticket things with, they have a cash register that needs to be programmed somehow. And that's something that I think is really empowering to have that feeling that even though maybe they wouldn't hire me or whatever, but the potential is there for me to work pretty much anywhere. And then the third part that I really like or that I think makes programming fun for me is the rewarding feeling that you get. And I think this is why a lot of people compare it to solving puzzles. And I think that's like one of the main reasons why I keep doing it as well, because you keep like, I run into these problems where I think I can't really solve them. It feels like it's impossible to solve. And I spent so long trying to solve the problem. And then once you find that solution, it's just like, you just keep reinforcing almost a feeling within yourself of like, or a, a, cer a certain feeling of like confidence in that you can pretty much solve whatever problem you run into. If you just spend long enough, you'll actually be able to solve it. It still feels like there's just like something in that balance that's just right, if that makes sense. And uh, it just keeps making it really rewarding to keep programming and keep trying to get better at it and trying to uh, achieve whatever goal you've set for yourself with whether it's you're building an app or building a website or a system of some kind. Okay, so those are like my thoughts on why I think that programming is fun. And um, now I think we should get back to working on the app and trying to actually get it ready for uh, pre-alpha. So now the app is actually very close to being able to be released because i that's what I've been working on these past couple hours, just trying to make it more efficient, refactoring some of the uh, unnecessarily complex code, and then trying to get it onto my phone so that I can actually use it properly now. And uh, now I have it on my phone, so that's awesome. And it works, so uh, that's really good.
you know today, the world is really rapidly moving towards a remote only or hybrid type of workspaces. And as that is happening, employees are moving across different time zones and to different countries. And today's video sponsor, Bubbles, is actually a really good way, an easy way for teams to collaborate across different time zones, <sighs> locations and work schedules, and without the hassle of live meetings. Bubbles is also completely free for all teams, no limits on usage or features to unlock. Just a single click lets you easily record your screen, annotate it and add voice or comments. Your team members can then respond on their own, in their own time, in the way that works best for them, through voice, image or text, all in the same bubble. And one of my favorite things about Bubbles is the fact that you can watch things at 1.5 or 2x speed. And this is because a lot of these things are mandatory, but they're not really jam-packed full of relevant information. And so being able to watch it at 2.5 or 1.5x speed means that I only have to spend half the time watching it, which I think is super valuable. Bubbles makes collaboration smooth and easy no matter where, when, or how your team works. You can try it right now from your browser, no installation or onboarding needed. And again, it's completely free, so just give it a try. So I was in there for about three minutes and I'm like still shivering. Uh. So yeah, I've actually kept that up uh, with the cold baths, but it's it's really difficult afterwards because you get like so shivery. Uh, I usually do like a couple push-ups and some pull-ups and squats and stuff like that just to get warm afterwards because it's really cold. Uh, yeah, I, I really like it. I think it's really good as well. Like, I think it definitely has benefits, but I haven't felt anything yet. Uh, but I do think that it has some and I I will keep doing it for a while at least. All right, so I'm gonna call it a day there and go to bed. Um, but we're very close to having the pre-alpha release, uh, which is what I'm looking forward to a lot right now. And uh, today was really good, even though I didn't show much progress. And the reason for that was, it was basically just a full day of refactoring code. And it's very difficult to show that on in a video, how that was done, but it means that there's a lot of stuff now that it works way more efficiently and a lot of bugs that have been fixed. So now the only thing that's left really is adding the ability to remove sets and delete exercises and also delete workouts. Once that's been done, it's actually ready for pre-alpha. So I think the next video will be where I actually fix those last couple of things. And then the video after that will be the actual release of the app, which I'm super excited about. So yeah, that that's the plan so far. I think I have time to do that because I think it shouldn't be too difficult to get those things done in the next two videos, but we'll see. Things rarely go according to plan, as you know. But, uh, and also, again, I've seen all the emails. If you want to become a beta tester, or really pre-alpha tester, but I'm just going to say beta tester for... because it's easier. So, uh, if you want to be a beta tester, you can sign up to it by just emailing me at cal at caltech.com and just title the email beta tester and then somehow come up with a way to sort through your feedback on the app. Uh, but I think this is super exciting. I think what I'm excited about the most is the fact that I'm actually sharing the entire journey of building this app out on in these videos in the series of coding my startup. And my goal with that is like, I wanna share the entire process however far I get with this startup even though I don't think it's like a billion dollar idea, like I've said, I still am excited to like take this as far as I can take it and document the entire journey because I think 
that's something that I haven't seen before. And I think it's it would be really interesting to see. And I also think it would be kind of unique because I can basically use my comment sections and the feedback that I get from you to improve the app, which will be super exciting. And I'm looking forward to that. And also, if you haven't seen, I have a playlist with all of the startup vlogs that I've done, and you can check them out somewhere here on the screen. And so yeah, there's a lot of content to consume, so go consume it.